Timelines are a great way to show an alternate view of posts or products or even a roadmap that your company may have if you have a product or a theme that you're selling. In this video, we're going to show you how to go ahead and add a timeline to your site and customize it to be uh, dynamic so that you can pull content in from specific places and so that you can customize it to look the way you want. Hey everyone, my name is Donald from Brainstorm Force and I make WordPress video tutorials of our products. If you're new here, consider subscribing to the channel and click that bell icon to get notified for whenever we upload a new video. So right here we have a couple of examples of the timeline. We have, right now we have some custom items where we have uh, launch dates for a few items. And then as you scroll down, you'll see that this line gets filled in to show the user what part of the timeline they're viewing specifically. And you notice that this is all customizable. We can go ahead and change the icons, the colors, the line thicknesses. As you can see, we have a different line thickness here. The uh, custom alignment, so left or right, and then that's automatic default for a couple of options as well. And then we have uh, links, so that you can actually add links to specific items. We can actually pull in posts. So we can pull in the post from your blog. You can go ahead and do that, along with their images. And then we also can do the same thing with WooCommerce products. So let's just go ahead and dive right in. So let's go ahead and search the sidebar for a timeline. And we're going to go ahead and click and drag that right into it. Let me add a little bit of padding and margin. Okay, so we have our timeline right here, and this is what it looks like by default. Left, right, left, right. Then we have the dates here. Right now it's pulling in a custom timeline that we've created, uh, but let's go ahead and show you what can be done with this. So right now we have the content source as custom. There's another option for post, and we'll go ahead and get into that in just a bit. So let's go under timeline items. So as you can see, each of these on the left-hand side correspond with the ones on the right-hand side. So we can actually go ahead and rearrange these however we wish. So you can see that's my heading 2 and my heading 1 now. Let's go ahead and flip those back. And then if we open up one of these items, we have some options here. We have the ability to add a date, a heading, some content, and then we also have the link option down here below. We also have the style option that allows us to override our global settings, which can be found underneath of the style tab. And we'll go ahead and get into, the, into that in just a bit. Now, just because this says date does not mean that you have to use it for a date. Um, for example, there is a method. So if you wanted to show customers how to perform certain steps on your site, let's say you have a listing directory site and you wanted to let them know how to add a listing to your site. Well, instead of it being date, you can use this as step one. And then you can have your heading as let's get started. Something along those lines, and then you can go ahead and add all of your content right here so that you can just add how to add your listing. And then you can go ahead to the next one and do step two, and so on and so on. And then we can go ahead and style these so that just they're just a little bit bigger. So there's different methods that you can do for this when it's under a custom uh, content source. And this is a great way to do your roadmap. So if you have a roadmap, uh, you can go ahead and add your dates here. So you have your date of release, maybe a specific feature that's going to be released, and then you have all of the content here, and then you can actually link it down to maybe a page uh, that says more detail about that feature. So that's a great way to just do just regular timeline items. You can add as much content as you want right here. Just keep adding the items, and then you have you have a great looking timeline here. Let's go ahead and move on to the posts. For the posts, right here, right here we have a few posts on our site about uh, some food items. So you can see right here the image, the featured image. We have the title, and we have a little bit of an excerpt here. And then this date right here is the day of publish the day it was actually published on the site. All right, so let's go ahead and, and show you what all can be done with this. So we have it loaded from posts, and then right in here we have posts for page six. So it's only gonna load up six of these per page, one, two, three, 
four, five, six. So we have those options to do that. And then we also have this infinite load. So we turned this infinite load on and we scroll down. It's going to, once we reach the bottom on the, on the front end preview, then it will actually load in more posts. And the amount of posts that it loads, it's going to be determined by the post per page that you have set right here. Right now we have six. You can have it so that it loads uh, two in every time. So every time you scroll down more, it'll load two more, it'll load two more after that. So that's, that's always a great option to have lazy load so that you don't have to worry about pagination, but also you can load in your content without having to slow it down if you guys have a lot of posts. Underneath the query, this is where we can get pretty fun. So we have two options, custom query and main query. Uh, I will go into main query in just a bit. We're gonna stick with custom for right now. The post type, so we have all of our post types here. And if you have custom post types, they will automatically be uh, laid out right here as well. So you can actually pull in custom post types. For example, if you do have a directory, you can do something along those lines. Or you can actually have, if you have multiple blogs, you can do that, things of that nature. So you can always pull them in here. Pages, media, things of that nature. So let's stick with posts. And then we have the options to filter out categories. So I've got some categories here. We can match categories or we can exclude categories. Matching categories allows us to put categories down here that we want to show. So if I only want to show cocktails, then I'll put cocktails here and it only shows cocktails. Same thing with food. If I want to only show food, we'll put food here and it's only going to show food categories here. If I want to exclude categories, meaning I want to show everything except for food, then I'll go ahead and click this. I'll show you uh, everything except cocktails because that seems to be more of what I've got here. So I want to show everything except cocktails. So we have all of these items here, and then we have some food and then some more food here. So that's a great way to show or not show specific categories. Same thing with the author. If you want to make it so that specific authors have their own timeline, you can match a specific author or exclude one. And then we also have the post filter rule. So if we want specific posts to show or not show, we have those options here. So for example, if we don't, if we want to only show this mint mojito, we could just type in mint and we only show the mint mojito. Same thing if we want to exclude posts. So let's go ahead and exclude this vodka martini. And if we do this, click it, and then it excludes it from the timeline view. So if you have a specific one, you don't want to. Sticky post. So inside of your settings, you can actually determine if you want a post to be sticky or not. And if you have any questions about that, we'll go ahead and link the, the documents on the uh, UAEO website so that you can determine how to do a sticky post or not. But there's an option to ignore this or to not ignore it. And we also have offset. So if we wanna offset a couple of posts, so let's say we have a different view for a couple posts, for the first post up here, and then we don't wanna show that first post again, we can offset that first post and have that here and then have the special view up here if you guys wanted to do something along those lines. Post order, so we can order by date, title, random, or the menu order. So if we do by title, and we do by ascending, then of course we have the B's first, and then E, G, so it goes in order of alphabetical order. And then if we want it to be reverse alphabetical order, we can do that as well by doing descending. Uh, we have the date, and then we have random order, and then menu order as well, uh, for all of those post order by options. If they're unable to find any posts, we can actually change what the display message says. Right now it says we can't find any posts, please try a different search. So maybe if you're showing events, uh, you can change this to say no events, uh, match your, po your search, uh, something along those lines. So you can actually change it so it doesn't have to be a post. And then if there aren't any, then you can display a search box or not if, they're, if they're none of the posts match. So that's always a great option. Underneath of the posts, we can actually show the image 
determine the image size, the titles, the excerpts, figure out how long of an excerpt we want, the links, and the dates. So let's go ahead and show you a few of those. So the show image, that's pretty basic. We could turn the image on or off to save load time, to save space, or just make it so that we don't have any images. When we do have the image turned on, we can determine how big of an image we want. We can do custom, we can do full, and then all of our other options that we have here. We can turn on or off the title. So for example, if you have maybe words inside of your image that determine what the title is, you can do that. You can also determine the title over here on the right hand side. You can also do that. Let's go ahead and turn that back on. We have the excerpt, so we can show or hide the excerpt right here. And we can go turn that on or off. And then we can determine the length. So if we want it to be longer, we can determine that using the excerpt length right here. The link type. So when you guys add a link to these, so right now it's just the posts, but if you did custom query, you had the option to add the, the links right there. So we can actually make it so that's the complete box, the text, or none. So we can turn off the link entirely if we don't want them to be able to link out to the post or the content that we have. And then we have date. So this date is the date field over here. There's a lot of different things that we could do with this. We have the published date, the last modified date, which right now they're all the same, so they won't show anything different. And then we have custom. Now custom is awesome because it allows you to add specific meta keys that allow you to pull in dynamic data for the timeline. So for example, like I said, you can actually pull in WooCommerce product pricing. You could pull in post titles, um, things of that nature. So you can actually pull in any dynamic content from custom fields and then actually show those on the other side of the content. The custom meta key field is very powerful because like I said, you can pull in dynamic content. And if you need to learn more about that, we have a section on the site where you can go in and you can learn more about this. So like I said, if you have a, an event that you wanted to show, you can show the event date as long as you know the meta key that comes with that event date. For example, you can do event underscore date for the event date if that's what your developer has for that plugin. And you can also do things like the, the product instead of the, the product price. So example, you can do uh, WooCommerce products to display the price instead of or for the product instead of the date that that product was published or anything like that. So let's go ahead and move on to the styling. So for styling, we have a lot of different options. We have left, so we have left aligned, so all of these are left aligned over here. And this is great if you wanted to do this maybe in a sidebar view. So if this was going to be a new column, let's go ahead and drag this over here. And this is a sidebar kind of thing going on. That way it's a little bit more neat and you can show the all aligned on one side. We have that option there. We have the ability to go ahead and do the center so it'll be a left and right alternating and then we have the right view as well where it's over here on the right hand side let's go ahead and switch that back we have the content alignment so we we can do left or center or right right now it is justified based on which side it is but we can always do left or right aligned like this so that they're all left or they're all right aligned or center but if you want to make it so that it's justified based on which side it's on, just make sure that none of these are highlighted. The arrow alignment, so this one, right, this little arrow right here, we can actually do the top, middle, or center align based on where the, on the timeline you want that to be. And then we also have the responsive support. So right now we have for tablet and mobile and then for mobile. So let's show you what it looks like when we go to tablet. So when we go to tablet, this all gets centered to the left-hand side. And then for mobile, it's all the same thing as well. We can actually turn this off so that it's just mobile only. And when we switch to the tablet, it'll still be left and right aligned. 
So you have all of those different options for the responsive. And then for when you are on the mobile device, you can determine if you want it to be on the left or the right hand side by clicking on this toggle right here and not messing with the orientation up here. You want to keep that the same, but then over here you can do the toggle. So spacing, we have the horizontal spacing. So if we increase this, it'll increase the spacing from the timeline line. And then we also have the vertical spacing as well. So if you want it to be closer together, we have those options as well, further apart. The heading bottom spacing, so we have those options. So on the title of the, of the timeline post, we can actually adjust the spacing right there. And timeline items. So there's a lot of different uh, sections and styling that we can do for the timeline items. So let's go ahead and go through all of this. The heading tag, this is great for SEO purposes. Of course, we can determine this. The heading color, if we wanted to go ahead and change that, we have the ability to do so. And of course, our description's color. So if we wanted it to be black, we can go ahead and add that. The heading topography, which is always great. We have the font family, the font size, all of those different options that we normally see inside the topography. And of course, the same thing for the description topography. We have all of those options here as well. Background color, so this entire background color right here, we can go ahead and change that to be whatever we want. If we want it to be uh, like a transparent, we could do that. If we wanted it to be a specific color, we have those options as well, just like so. And then we can also go ahead and just change how everything looks, just like so. If we wanted it to be a little bit of a darker theme. We have the option for box shadow or not, so if you see when I turn it on and off, it adds a little bit of a box shadow right here. And of course you have all of those different options right here. The shadow color, uh, the blur effect, you have those options. As you can see right here we have little bits of round corners. And we have the option to go ahead and turn that off. Or by making it bigger. So we have those options there. So we can make it so that it's a little bit more rounded on the corners. And then we have our padding. Our padding is set right now to a default, but we can adjust that by just picking which padding we want and adding that. If we want it to be a bigger padding, we can go ahead and add those as well. So you can see what that looks like right there. The dates. Let's go ahead and add the dates back in so that I can show you what the styling looks like. Okay. So let's go to the posts and we have the published date right here. Okay, so we have the dates. We have the options of doing the topography so we could do the font size, we could do the font color as well if we wanted to change that right here. And then we have the options to do the focused and the hover different um, styling for that as well. And I didn't cover it, but we also have the same options or when you're focused and hovered. So for example, if we want the background to be blue when we hover, we have those options to do that. Let's see, the connector. So this line along with these icons. So we have the connector icon right here and it's a calendar. So this lets us know it's a posted, whatever date it was posted. Uh, we have the connector width, so we can actually increase that or decrease that as we wish. And then of course our icon size, we can increase or decrease that. And we'll want to increase or decrease the background size based on our icon size, just so that it matches and it's not going to be overblown and too small or too big. The line colors, so we have options for default focused and hover. So the line color right now is green, so we can actually change that to blue. And this is going to be the line when it's not, when it hasn't been scrolled. So as you can see, it's blue right now, and as we scroll down, it's green. Let's go ahead and change the line color when it's focused to black. So right now, when it's focused, you can see that it's, that it's this light blue right here. And as we scroll down, it goes ahead and it covers that. And then we have the options for hover. So we also have the options for the icon color and the background color.
Let's make the icon color the same. I'm sorry, the background color the same. And then the icon white. So that when we scroll, we have those options to show that. But we want it to turn blue when it gets to it. So we want this to be blue. So as you can see, when it when this line reaches the icon, it will turn blue. There we go. So that way it'll match the, the line of the color and the background will look the same. You can go ahead and do that. And we can always change the icon color to be black for when it hits it and it reaches it. So you can do something along those lines right there. So we have complete control over the lines, the icons, the backgrounds, the thicknesses, everything, which is always great because you want to have control over everything so that you can determine what it looks like on your site and so that it can match your brand at the best that it can. Okay, so earlier we discussed the content and if we had the custom set with the timeline items. So right here we have our three items here. And it, and it kept our styling, so everything's going to transfer over. But I want to make it so that this first one is styled a little bit different. So I want to go ahead and click on that and click Style and click the Override Global Settings. And from here, we have all the same settings for Global, but for this single item. So if we want this to be a different icon, we can do that. If we want the heading color to be different, we can add those. And if we want the description color to change the background color to be different, we can go ahead and change all of those for the single one. And we don't have to worry about it um, mixing in with the others. And we have the icon background color. All of those options are able to be controlled on a per event basis as long as you have the, uh, the custom selected for the content source, we have those options to go ahead and change that. I hope you guys find the video useful. Be sure to hit the like button and subscribe to our channel if you haven't done so, so that way you can get notified for more videos. And we will see you guys next time.